Oh god, I've created a monster. He's just sniping me from across the map. Just stop it. S stop it. You might wonder how I got myself into this position. Flashback. Today we're going to talk about an AI that aims and shoots projectiles at the player. What you see before you is a standard AI that you'll normally see in GBG, where people will make a, a little turret that points at the player and shoots at them. And if you've noticed, this AI, he's, he's technically facing me and shooting at me, but he's not landing a single shot, right? Even though I'm just running circles around this guy point blank. Uh, this is what I'd call a Stormtrooper AI. He's usually throwing projectiles in your general direction, but he's not really hitting the target. <laughs> I'll be walking you through how to build aimbots of varying complexity for your own levels. So let's get started. Remember, you don't always need a 5,000 IQ aimbot for your levels, all right? Sometimes it's good enough to make a launcher that's connected to a touch sensor so that whenever the player walks through the touch sensor, then it'll aim at them, kind of like a tripwire trap. Let's say I want something a little bit fancier where I want an AI that can kind of aim at the player and shoot at them. The first level of AI is what I'd call a Stormtrooper AI. It basically looks at where the player currently is and just shoots straight at them. Here's the main recipe for a Stormtrooper AI. First, we have an anchor point. Here, this immovable cylinder, which is gonna act as the home point for the enemy. Then, the enemy is a traveler, which is connected to this immovable anchor point with this Y hinge that allows it to rotate around in the XZ plane. This traveler has a little box, which is a gun, and a little launcher attachment to be able to aim and fire. And this just goes to make a fancy little man with a gun. Now the goal here is to make the man face the player in the XZ plane, so he fires at the player's current position. To do this, I have a pair of location sensors. One hooked to the traveler, and one hooked to the player character. We want to calculate the vector that goes from the enemy to the player character. So I use subtraction calculators to take the difference of the X coordinate and the difference of the Z coordinate. And so now these two values are the X, Z coordinates of that vector. Now that we found the vector for where the man is supposed to face, we can turn that into an angle. This is where our new friend, the trusty position to angle nodon comes in. His job is to bring in coordinates for a vector and tell you what angle that corresponds to. This angle can be fed directly into a Y hinge except this Y hinge is upside down, and so I, I use a plus minus inversion node on in order to invert the value of that angle. So for the low, low price of six nodons of AI, you get this menacing looking Stormtrooper AI, where he looks like he's doing his job. He's looking at the player and kind of aiming at him, and technically the Stormtrooper AI will be able to hit the player if they stop moving. Now let's say that we instead need the AI to be able to aim in three dimensions. Since we're using vectors, the math is gonna be very similar. The main difference is that first we need an X hinge here between the man and his gun. This way, the man can point the gun up or down to hit a target that is higher up or lower down. Next, when we calculate the vector that goes from the enemy to the player character, we need a 3D vector. So here I have the difference in X, Y, and Z. Next, we need to calculate the angle in the YZ plane, which is how far the barrel of the gun is pointed up versus down. This requires a little bit of actual math. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 So what I'm doing here is taking X squared plus Z squared and then square rooting. I'll explain with this very crude drawing. Here, we need to get the angle of how much to point the gun up, which is the angle between the orange and the blue. Once we have the length of the orange segment, which is square root of x squared plus z squared, position to angle node on will take care of the rest of the work to calculate the angle between the orange and the blue. Now you can see that this Stormtrooper AI is now capable of shooting up and down. So now he can miss his shots in all three dimensions. Stormtrooper AI is doing a pretty good job of being menacing, but he's not very good at his job. He misses most of his shots, and even though he can aim in all three directions, he isn't very good at it. So this begs the question, how do we build a better aiming AI? The problem with the AI is that right now we're just feeding it the 
position of where the player currently is, which is shown by this vector D. The problem is that if the player moves, then while the bullet is in transit, the player is naturally getting out of the way because they're going to be at a totally different position. As a result, the Stormtrooper AI will miss every single one of its targets as long as the player is moving. The solution here is to not have the AI shoot at where the player currently is, but to aim at where the player is going to be when the bullet lands. Well, Loop, how are we supposed to know where the player is going to be? The answer to that in reality is you don't, but you do have the player's speed. So you do know where the player is going to be going next as long as they keep moving in a straight line. So the idea with the AI is we're going to abuse that fact. If the player does the lazy strategy of not responding to the AI and not responding to the bullets, they will get hit. We want to create gameplay opportunities where the player is forced to actually dodge the bullets and not just walk in a straight line and, you know, and nothing happens. So the strategy here is to take the distance vector and add the velocity vector times the amount of time it takes for the bullet to hit its target. The problem is that the best way to calculate the time is to use the position that the target's gonna be at, which we don't know yet. However, we do know the launch speed of the bullet. There are two main approaches. One is to assume that the amount of time it takes for the bullet to hit its destination is about the same time it takes for the bullet to hit where the player is right now. This is not a perfect solution because it doesn't account for differences in time that it takes to reach the new position versus the old position. However, it will make the AI way more accurate without adding too many nodons. The second strategy, which is way more complicated, is to use trigonometry to figure out what this angle is and precisely calculate what the time is until the bullet hits the target destination. And I'll go over this more later. First, we're gonna use the rough approximation that it takes about the same amount of time for the bullet to hit the current position as it does for the target destination. In this new AI, we have these two new blocks. This block of code calculates the time until the bullet makes impact at the current position. To get this, we just look at the current vector that goes between the enemy and the player, and we take x squared plus y squared plus z squared and square root. Then we divide by the launch speed, and that just gives us the time it takes for the bullet to hit the target. Now that we know the amount of time, we use this speed sensor, which is attached to the player character, to get the player character's speed. And then we multiply that speed times time gives us the distance. As, as a vector. This vector tells us how much the player has moved and what direction during the period of time that the bullet is in the air. We add this amount of movement to where the player currently is in order to get this vector, which is where we think the player is going to be. Then we use the same code as before to point the barrel of the gun towards that position. So the question is, is it any better? Yeah, that's actually a lot better. Like for, if you wanna make a level, like. I can no longer freely run circles around this guy without any sort of fear of getting hit. As a matter of fact, as long as I move in a way that's perpendicular to this guy's motion, which is normally the best way to dodge a projectile, I will probably get hit. Now, the approximation is not perfect, especially if you're moving at an angle that really does change the amount of time it takes for the projectile to reach you. However, this AI is a vast improvement over the Stormtrooper AI that we started with. Even though we're using an approximation, this AI is definitely good enough to be able to catch a UFO in mid-air, even if it's moving in full 3D. This is probably the AI that I'd recommend most people use in their levels. This is pretty accurate without breaking the bank in terms of how many nodons and how much complexity there is. Let's say I want to account for jumping by adding acceleration to the mix. Here I can account for gravity. This movement is added in to where we think the player is going to be to give us a more refined measurement. This makes the AI generally better at tracking the player vertically in accounting for gravity, but you can see he's aiming in the totally wrong direction. Part of that is whenever the player jumps, the game gives you a very, very large upwards acceleration to get you up into the air. And the AI uses that information to calculate a position that's way high up, that makes absolutely no sense. And additionally, he doesn't know that I'm actually going to hit the ground and he assumes that I'm going to keep accelerating with gravity all the way down through the floor, and so sometimes he aims at the ground. I've tried many things to make an AI that can snipe you when you jump in midair, but they weren't really very effective. Yet luckily, I found a very powerful solution that makes sure the AI will never miss you when you jump, and that is to just disable the jump button. 
That way, you'll never be able to jump and the AI will never miss you in midair. What about the other method, which is actually much more accurate? The other method allows us to directly estimate what point the player is going to be at without making an approximation. Here's what that code looks like. Here we are getting the player's actual speed by taking x squared plus y squared plus z squared square root, cosine of the angle between distance and velocity vectors, here's the magnitude of the distance vector, use a quadratic formula to solve an equation to get the time until impact, then multiply speed times time to get where we think the player is going to be. And lastly, we aim the barrel of the gun at the player again. So we did all that math, but the question is, was it worth it? Well, I don't know. Like, I'm having a pretty hard time dodging my aimbot from literally the opposite side of the world. So, I'm gonna go ahead and say that it's pretty successful. This isn't perfect because sometimes, like, he'll miss a shot, partially because the gun is at his side instead of at his dead center. But that's more of an aesthetic choice, and I'm gonna keep it that way. You know what would be really terrifying is if we made this AI also chase you across the map. So I took the AI from my previous video, where he randomly patrols an area to guard it, and if he starts chasing the player, then start walking at the player after a chase sequence has been started, and do it with a certain speed. This transformation with a position to angle and angle to position node on makes it so that the speed is turned into a unit vector so that we actually have full control of the speed. Like I actually was not in complete control of the speed in the last video. And then we go to that position. Now he randomly patrols his little area of the map like a little wooden soldier. And then when you activate a touch sensor, now he becomes a lean mean fighting machine that doesn't just snipe you, but he's also getting closer. Now this AI is really hard to fight. You'd have to wonder what kind of madman would put this thing in an actual level. Oh, right. That's me. Now I made a little level to showcase the power of this AI if you want to, you know, test it out for yourself. He is really good at sniping you from across the map. Like, you have to actively dodge and, you know, zig and zag in order to not get hit. End of flashback. But yeah, uh, I have to live with the consequences of my actions now. Again, for your own levels, if you don't want to make a super complicated AI that costs 150 nodons, this is your go-to option. And I'm going to upload a version of this level that has code with a couple of very simple aimbots for you to use. This aimbot isn't MLG phase clan material, but he's pretty good at, you know, making sure the player stays on their toes and, and pays attention to the projectiles. If you have issues recreating any of this or have questions for your own levels, feel free to drop by my Twitch stream where it's a lot easier for me to talk about your level when I have the code right in front of me. With that, I hope you learned a little bit to maybe make turrets or enemies that fire projectiles for your own levels. They don't normally have to be super complicated, just pick whatever you think makes most sense for your own level. And with that, that's all I have for you today guys. I'll see you around. Later!